The first time he asked me to sit on his lap, a wave of nausea and terror flooded my body. I knew it was wrong, but everyone was waiting. He was sitting in an armchair at my aunt's house. Our family gathered around. Ho, 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 the man boomed. My younger cousins shrieked in excitement. I grimaced. Come, sit here, he pointed at me, patting his legs. I had wanted this my entire life to sit on Santa's lap, to regale him with my Christmas wishes, but it felt horrible, it felt sinful. I was 12 years old and I was celebrating Christmas for the first time. Up until then, I had been a devout Jehovah's Witness. I'd lived the early years of my life in blissful ignorance of the rest of the world. My father taught me how to read when I was three years old using a children's illustrated Bible. Jehovah was one of the first words I recognized. I was taught that I was special. Of all the things I saw in television or in public, Christmas, Halloween, birthday parties, they were for people who weren't aware of Jehovah and his promise of everlasting life. I was taught to be wary of the world, to look at things with a critical eye, that Satan had his hands in everything. Our religion didn't seem to care about children except as future propagandists of the truth. There was no Sunday school, no youth groups. There was no fun. Nothing to look forward to except the end of the world. We are expected to be tiny adults. Before starting school, I was excited. My mind was hungry and I loved learning. A few days before I started kindergarten, my parents sat me down to have a serious conversation. They explained that even though I could be nice to the other kids, I couldn't befriend them because they were worldly. They lived lives outside of Jehovah's, dis Jehovah's approval, and I had to make sure not to do anything Jehovah wouldn't like. School was everything I hoped it would be, but I soon discovered that a hierarchy existed. And I was the weird kid who told everyone on the playground that the world was about to end. <laughs> I learned quickly that the kid who tells everyone who they're about to die in a firestorm isn't terribly popular. <laughs> the holidays were the roughest time of the year. Halloween, at least, was only one night. My younger sister and I were imaginative in how we coped. On Halloween night, we'd lock the doors, turn off the lights, and pretend that the trick-or-treaters were Nazis and that we were Anne Frank, just trying to stay alive. <laughs> Every year after Thanksgiving, I went into a depression that I felt I had to keep hidden. Christmas time was painful for me because I wanted Christmas. I walked around for a month with a jealousy in my belly. Despite what I'd been taught, I wanted a Christmas tree to sing Christmas carols. I wanted a magical fat white man to deliver gifts to me. And I was ashamed of this desire. I sucked candy canes into daggers I'd used to poke myself in the mouth as penance. If Christmas was Eden, I was Eve, and peppermint was my forbidden fruit. The religion also tried to divorce us from any cultura cultural identity we had. Jehovah was above all else, and traditions were erased. I had minimal connection to my Mexican or Puerto Rican heritage except for food and language. The neighborhood where I grew up was predominantly Mexican and they held posadas every December. A posada is a 12-day ritual reenactment of Joseph and Mary's search for lodging, traditionally celebrated in Mexican communities with open houses of food and singing. Pepe, the gangster who lived next door, thought it was a travesty I didn't know about posadas and tried to explain them to me halfway through his second 12-pack one afternoon. <laughs> you see, jo Jose's Lady Maria got knocked up by God. <laughs> and he had to go home to pay the man, but the fuckers where he was from wouldn't let them crash, even though she was pregnant by God, so she gave birth in a barn. That's why we drink with strangers. <laughs> I was confused but intrigued. I wanted that too. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate Christmas for various reasons that made little sense to my childhood mind. Christmas, according to the doctrine, was based on a pagan holiday, Saturnalia, a Roman celebration of the god Saturn, and it was turned into Jesus' birthday. All Jehovah's Witness kids are expected to be models of pre-apocalyptic living, the kind of piety that would reserve us our spot in the new order, the promised utopia that all witnesses were readying for. 
The new order was green pastures where the lion lay with the lamb, and it seemed that everybody had a baby panda or koala bear. <laughs> this exquisite promise of paradise was supposed to quell our desire to be attached to the worldly world. Every December, I covered my depression with a self-righteous rage that made me feel holy. I would stare down the kids around me and think, yeah, go ahead. You enjoy your little Santa Claus and Christmas while you can because you're going to die in a firestorm and I'm going to live forever. <laughs> I used to have elaborate fantasies that the apocalypse would come during recess. The firestorm would begin and all the kids who'd celebrate Christmas would be running around screaming their heads off and they'd see me protected in a bubble of divine light. <laughs> they'd run up begging to be let in and I'd look at them and say, you should have listened to me. <laughs> Every year there was a holiday assembly where the whole school would gather to sing Christmas carols and I wasn't allowed to attend. I would be sent to the nurse's office where I'd sit on a cot. I could hear the kids' voices singing from the, across the hall, and I would pray as I struggled not to sing along in my head, but it was a battle. It went like this. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Dear Jehovah, thank you for my eternal life. Had a very shiny nose. Protect me, Jehovah, from the worldly, worldly ways. And if you ever saw him, no, Satan, I will not sing along. You would even say it glows like a light bulb. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jehovah. I was 12 when my mom decided she was sick of waiting for the end of the world, tired of the dogma, and we left the religion. We were immediately ostracized by our friends in the religion because we'd left. I was relieved and I was terrified. I had lived my entire life as a Jehovah's Witness and I was suddenly expected to forget everything. No more end of the world. Religion had occupied a huge part of my life and all of a sudden it was gone and there was nothing left to fill the void. But Christmas was coming. Our first Christmas party was at a relative's house. It was what I had wanted my entire life, to be like everyone else. But the Jehovah's Witness beliefs were ingrained in me by then, and belief isn't a switch you can flip. I couldn't express my confusion. I was scared that if I told my family what I was feeling, they would assume I wanted to return to being a witness. That Christmas, I did what I'd always wanted to do. I sat in Santa's lap and it felt like sitting in Satan's lap. <laughs> Religion had dried up my capacity for belief in magic and fantasy. Whispering my wants to Santa wasn't something I wanted anymore, but I did it quickly and jumped off his lap, wondering if Jehovah was watching. It took me years to stop wondering if Jehovah was watching. These days when my doorbell rings and I open it to find a Jehovah's Witness on my doorstop, I am always polite but firm when I tell them I am not interested. If the witness happens to have a child with them, it takes a lot not to tell the parent, you have no idea what you're doing to your child. I still don't celebrate Christmas. I don't have any emotional attachment to the holiday, even though I still have to fight off the old blues of exclusion every season. I'm not an outward Grinch, but I hate the way Christmas is invasive, how it permeates almost every aspect of our society. I grieve what could have been, but then I remember the religion gave me a gift. It taught me to look at the world with a critical eye, to look at the commercial trappings and cons cons consumption of popular culture. I start each day with meditation and then a practice of writing down what I'm grateful for. Each day I'm grateful that I don't live under Jehovah's judgmental eye anymore and I don't have to worry about firestorms. That was